Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordine. If you're new here, today's video is going to be a wear test and review on the new House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. So if you're interested in how this foundation wears, then keep on watching. I have two shades of this foundation. I initially picked it up in 480, but I also went into store and I got 470. So we'll see which one works better, but this is what the unicarton looks like. This is what the bottle looks like. I really like the bottle. I think it's very sleek. It reminds me kind of the Le Mer like bottle except you know it's not the same the La Mer is more slender but yes it looks really good um it has house labs logo up top and then it is a pump so some brief information about the foundation it retails for $45 it's available on sephora.com and in select locations so you can look up and see which stores they're in currently and also on house labs um, but the foundation claims to be a medium coverage weightless clean foundation with fermented arnica that reduces redness, helps even the skin tone, and protects from environmental stress. It is a natural finish. So the highlighted ingredients are that fermented arnica, which helps with redness and irritation, intolizin, what is that, seven complex, which is a proprietary blend of medicinal herbs that promote healing and calming and Bioferment 7 Complex, which is a proprietary blend of super um, antioxidants that protect the skin from stress. It is vegan, gluten-free, and cruelty-free. It's supposed to be a skincare foundation like everybody's making nowadays, but it claims to be a long wear performing foundation that's not going to compromise your skin. It's supposed to blur texture and pores and leave a natural skin-like finish that wears for 12 plus hours. That is good to know. And the foundation comes in 50 shades. Not bad. Okay, so again, like I mentioned, I picked up the shade 480 initially when it launched because 480 was described as a medium deep neutral. So a medium deep with neutral balance undertones. 470 is described as a medium deep with cool golden olive undertones when i went into store and i saw it i realized that the undertones are kind of flipped with house labs from what we typically think of as like warm cool um neutral is still the same you know the balance neutral of the mixture so um if you guys are familiar with mac they categorize cool as something that has more yellow I'm, I'm gonna say warm but more like yellow golden undertones and that's what it seems like house labs is doing right now um and then their warms are like more red so yeah um i have a neutral and i have a medium deep cool so let's see how this looks that's 480 on the back of my hand i'm just gonna swatch it maybe i should do like one side 480 not bad and one side 470 and see which would be like better right yeah let's do that so that's 480 so this is 470 here. 470 looks closer on the back of my hand, but my face is a little darker. This is 470, which is described as a medium deep but cool golden olive undertones. Cool golden olive undertones. Interesting. Cool golden olive undertones. When I think of that, I think more neutral. But, um, because cool golden. Balancing the gold, right? Okay, am I tripping? Anyway, this is 470. <laughs> this is 480. Let's just do half and half. So I already have my skin moisturized. Um, I have on my typical moisturizer, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. And let's just go ahead and see what we think. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of which shade would work better for you. Um, since I have both anyway. Let's just put both of them on, right? <laughs> All right, so this is 480. Just gonna zoom in a little closer. Okay, don't mind me. I forgot that I used that brush for shimmer highlight. I'm gonna pump a little bit more of the 480. I'm like messing up the foundation already. All right, so I have a little bit of shimmer on my face. I'm just going to use my sponge.
Okay, so this is 480. No makeup. Not bad. Actually, not bad at all. Alright, let's see what this 470 looks like. And I put um like one and a half pumps on this side, so I'm gonna do the same over here. I like the texture of the foundation. It feels very lightweight. It looks very pretty. Okay. 470, 480. You know, they both could work. They both could definitely work. But I do see where 480 is a little bit more flat on my skin. I feel like I have a little bit more life with the 470. And what I mean by life is like the undertone brightens up my skin a little bit more. Not in a lightening way, but if you guys can see, my chest is more yellow. So if I go with anything that's too neutral, I look very dull and dead. And we don't want that, right? But both of them can work. Let me know what you think. Which which side do you like better? I have both of them here. Um, I like both of them. Let me know what you think. Fifty shades. It looks like people can probably fit into numerous shades when it comes to this foundation. I was also looking at 460 as well, but I I like this one better. I think that this would have worked well too. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion. I'm gonna go in with the Sephora Best Skin Ever in 50N. This is the concealer love this thing so we'll see how this looks once i finish like my my whole makeup routine if it makes a difference i'm tempted to put on my danessa myricks yummy skin blur and balm but i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that we're not gonna sway the foundation but yeah concealer does this look like it's turning red oh lord i'm confused now all right, let's just blend this out. <laughs> Have you guys picked up this foundation? Let me know which shade you picked up because it looks like I'm having a hard time with this one as well. Lately, the foundation shades have not been easy for me to pick out. I'm just going to have to go into the store from now on. Because I don't like wasting product, like buying numerous colors and then wasting it. Um, because yeah, that's not good for the environment and on top of that somebody else could have used that shade. Especially now that this foundation is pretty popular, somebody could have used one of these shades, you know. Just my thought process. <laughs> this concealer is so pretty. And you guys know normally I use brushes for my complexion. But my brushes are dirty. <laughs> most of them. Well, you know, not most of them. The ones that I use a lot. And I'm not trying to dirty it. No more brushes until I wash the brushes that I need to wash. Because then I'm going to be mad at myself when I have hundreds of brushes to wash. Definitely no fragrance to this foundation, which I like. Hmm. I wonder if it's my light in. This is 470 with the concealer. 480 with the concealer. Doesn't this look like it's turning a little bit more red? Like here? Am I tripping? We gonna have to get some natural sunlight in here because right now I don't know what's going on. Either one of these shades work for me. I'm gonna keep saying that because I'm confused. I don't know which one is the perfect one and I'm not keeping both of them. No, we're not doing that. So we got to figure it out. Alrighty, so I did also pick up the powder. So this is the Bio Blurring Loose Powder. I have it in the shade Deep Honey. Is that Deep Honey? Yeah, Deep Honey. So this powder claims to be a clean skincare infused loose powder that blurs imperfections, smooth skin, and optimizes makeup performance in five talc-free soft 
focus shades. Okay, so it's talc free. It retails for $38, but it only has 0.24 ounces or 7 grams of product. Very expensive for a loose powder. Actually, very ridiculous for that price. Um, what? 0.24 ounces? Anyway, um, so it has fermented arnica, which is supposed to reduce redness and irritation, plant squalene, which protects the and boosts hydration, and tourmaline, which supports cellular energy. So, yeah. This looks good right now. We have a nice natural finish to the skin, slight glow, nothing overly greasy. So we'll see how the powder sets everything now. This is what the actual component looks like. You have a mirror top with a plastic bottom packaging cute but again amount that you get inside of it not great so this is what it looks like you have a net on the inside of the jar so you don't get too much powder no scent i'm just gonna go ahead with the sponge to set and i'm just setting my t-zone so under eyes nose and all that good stuff all right so everything is smooth that's just from one dip did pick up a good amount so let's see hmm. it's smooth oh very smooth oh I thought it was going to look heavy because it was looking a little powdery upon first application, but that's nice. That looks good. Okay, y'all know I'm very picky with powder, so let's see. Another dip. Is it the sponge? Is the sponge helping it out? Maybe. Whoa. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to go with a brush. This is a refer number 30. Yeah, number 30. Okay, the sponge definitely helped a little bit, but the powder itself is pretty smooth, as you can see with the brush application. You can see a slight tint to it. It is brightening a little bit more. So this shade is definitely more of a brightening shade for me. But I'm not mad at it. I'm mad at the amount that I get, but... I don't need no more powders, girl. Oh, this looks good. Oh, am I trying? Oh, my skin looks really good. Anyway, let me put this top back on because this is going right here, right beside my Laura Mercier Ultra Blur. Yeah, this looks good. Thoughts? What do you guys think? Okay, so let's just go in and finish up the rest of our makeup while we are here. Continuing on with House Labs, we're going to go in with the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer in Deep Level 10. It looks like this. If you guys haven't seen my initial video, I actually really like this bronzer. It blends very nicely. And we're going in with a Wayne Goss Edit Number 1 brush. Look at that. Keep in mind, the perimeters of my face have not been set, so this is just blending very nicely on top of that liquid, which it did in the initial review anyway, so feels good that it works really well with this foundation as well, as it should, because it's the same brand. Beautiful. I feel like my skin looks really good. Yo. Look at that. I feel like that even gave my skin 
additional blur. This is nice. Impeccable. My skin looks really good, you guys. Like, I know I always say that. <laughs> because foundations tend to look really good upon first application. But I think this looks so good. It is very blurring. Let me zoom in. Like, there we go. Like, look at my pores. Like, concentrate here. Look here. Look at my forehead. Like, even my smile lines. My chin where I set with the powder. And then here where I don't really have a lot of powder. Like, just look at my skin. It's still blurred. But with the powder on top, it's like smooth, smooth. Wow. Going in with this M Cosmetics highlighter sunscape highlighter and legendary i have a video that i need to put up where i'm trying this um so yeah i'll put that up soon <laughs> i'm just gonna highlight the high points of my cheek i totally forgot about that video like it's chilling on the sd card <laughs> that is hilarious ooh, 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 ooh. Look at that highlighter, so pretty. And then for blush, I'm going in with my Gucci blush in Warm Berry. You guys, I have been loving this blush. Like honestly, it's so good. Going in with a reference number four for that Gucci blush. This formula, this look, it blends so nicely. Very happy with this. Mm -mm -mm. It's just a nice everyday blush for deeper skin. Okay, so this is what my complexion looks like so far. I'm just going to continue on with my makeup. I'm going to film another video, but for my brows, I'm going to go in with the House Labs, the Edge Precision Brow Pencil, which I've been loving since I've purchased it so that's nothing new so when I come back I will show you what my makeup is looking like and give you my thoughts and then we'll see what what's going on with this how we'll wear it for today all right guys so this is what my makeup is looking like um like I mentioned I filmed another makeup look this video of this eye look is up already so I'll leave it linked down below if you're interested in how I created that look but you guys my foundation looks good my skin looks good still confused about the shades let me know what you think but so far so good i think it looks beautiful so i'll leave a clip of natural sunlight in this video so that you guys can see the shades and then we'll kind of figure it out from there and i'll probably have my makeup on for about eight hours today not too long i got started a little late so we'll see how everything wears all right so we're in some natural light this is 480 this is 470. So 480, 470. All right, guys, it's the end of the night. I've had my makeup on for eight hours, and this is what everything is looking like. Just a reminder, this is a 480, this is 470. Yeah, I still don't know what shade I want to keep. Um, but for the most part, the foundation looks really good. It looks amazing. My skin looks so 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 good. Not overly greasy, a slight slight sheen to it. It looks very natural, very smooth. Does not look cakey. I only had it on for 8 hours. Normally I go 12, 13 hours. So I'm interested in seeing what that would look like. But it hasn't been break, like, broken up anywhere. Normally like here I would have a little deeper expression line. So not bad at all. No smile lines. Not really coming off around my mouth either. Just looks very perfected. Very lightweight. I cannot feel this foundation on my skin at all. Which you know I love. I love not feeling the makeup. This foundation might 
might be a top contender. Like I mentioned, I think it looks really pretty. I like the way that it looks on the skin. Like the initial application was very poreless, very smooth. I think it still looks good on the skin. Right now at the 8 hour mark, I think this would be a really good everyday foundation as well as an event foundation. Like I think this would wear really well. I'm impressed. I like it a lot. Especially with the powder on top of it. Oh, this is nice. Even though you get a little bit of product in this powder, I think it's very smooth and blurring and I like that it is talc free. So I'm not mad at this combination of things. How size is not doing too bad. Not doing too bad at all. Imagine I was like, oh, it's just okay. My initial review, it's okay, but that's good because it has good products. And I'm liking this. I'm interested in seeing what else they come out with now that they have complexion because I'm feeling the way that this look. I can't wait for a concealer to come out. Some more cream products. Yeah, um, my skin looks really good. What do you guys think? Let me know. And then down below, also let me know which color you like better. I think I'm leaning towards the 470, but really I can do either or, to be honest. Like, it's just a slight, slight bit more neutral. But yeah, other than that, both shades look similar to me. So yeah, that's gonna be it, you guys. Okay, so this is another day of wearing a foundation. Had it on for 13 hours today. Just wanted to update you guys on a longer wear test. I still think it looks good. I've had on a mask for majority of the day as well. You can see a little bit of the mask line here, but everywhere else it didn't really transfer. So that feels good. It looks pretty good to me. It's not greasy. It doesn't look cakey or heavy. Like, look, definitely some weird hair from me eating in the mask. But other than that, perfect. It It's definitely going to be a favorite. I can feel it. I just want to reach for it every day. This shade is 470 that I have on currently. Still confused about the shades though. So I want you guys to tell me what shade you think I should keep. That's going to be it for today's video. Everything will be linked down in the description box down below if you're interested in trying anything out. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jordine. I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up because it helps me out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.